You know a term we hear in Naruto a lot? It's yin release, it's yang release, it's even yin yang release. But at the end of the day, it feels like nobody really knows what any of these things mean. I mean, if we're being entirely real, Naruto never really explained them. But they seem so important. I mean, why would they keep getting brought up and not explained? Because if they did get explained, I wouldn't have a job. So let's be happy that they didn't. And since we're talking about my job, why don't you go ahead and do your job, which is to like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Because if you're ever confused about anything in anime, listen, I'll be the one to clear that up for you. So let's start with what we know. There's five basic chakra natures, right? There's fire earth lightning wind and water those are all relatively simple they're based off natural elements we understand that but outside of those five nature releases there's three chakra releases that have nothing to do with nature at an incredibly base level explanation yin release uses spiritual energy and yang release uses physical energy but that means absolutely nothing to you right let's first talk about yin and yang i'm sure you've heard of it who hasn't yin and yang comes from a ancient chinese philosophical standpoint that when two things seem diametrically opposed, they're actually, in fact, usually interconnected and dependent on each other. This principle applies to a lot of things in the human life. Expanding, contracting, light, dark, fire, water, male, female. All things that may seem separate, but are actually dependent on each other. And in the case of these chakra releases we're talking about, the situation is no different. Chakra is created when two primal energies combine into one. Those two primal energies are physical energy, which is collected from the body's own cells and can be increased through stimulants or training. Think of it like your energy. By working out, you can get stronger, but it's gonna make you tired. By eating, you get more power to your cells. By drinking a Red Bull, you get more energy. All of these things deal into physical energy. It's very human. The other part though is spiritual energy. And this is the much harder energy to harvest and train because spiritual energy can only be increased through studying, meditation, or experience. When you combine spiritual with physical energy, then you get chakra. Technically, you get ninjutsu, but this was never Hagoromo's plan. Hagoromo only wanted to allow humans to tap into their spiritual energy. You know how sometimes Naruto says, we don't need to talk, we fought. By connecting our fists, we've said more than our words ever could. Or when they say that all things are connected by chakra and therefore all things are easy to understand once you tap in to the chakra network. This is essentially all Hagoromo was trying to accomplish. He wanted humans to be able to tap into their spiritual energy so that they could understand each other without ever having a conversation. By identifying that they're one of a large whole being, they would be able to understand and get along with each other. But humans being humans connected their spiritual energy to their physical energy, which made ninjutsu. Well, it made chakra that they molded into ninjutsu. So now that we've gone over what comprises yin yang and yin yang releases, let's go over them individually. We'll start with yin. Yin release is very interesting. And if you watched my most recent video about the Nara clan shadow possession technique, you'll have gotten a small little summary of what it is already. Let's take a more in-depth look. Yin release is when you give nothingness form what does that what does that mean that makes no sense whatsoever you're right essentially yin release is when somebody uses their spiritual energy in conjunction with their imagination to form that spirit energy into something that doesn't actually exist or at least didn't actually exist until they made it so there's two really good examples of this and we'll, we'll go over those right now the first and most prevalent known use of it is genjutsu this is why the uchihas are claimed to be the high and mighty yin release users. Because think about what Genjutsu is for a second. You are creating a scenario in somebody else's head that isn't actually happening. By molding your spiritual chakra with your imagination, you can create something out of nothing. Itachi created the cross that Kakashi felt himself nailed to. He created the swords that he stabbed into Kakashi for 72 hours. But those things don't have a physical form. They are still nothingness. That'll be important in a second. The second most prevalent use of yin release is the Nara clan shadow stitching shadow possession technique. This is a very interesting example because you have to think of a shadow as a non-actual thing. A shadow is not a physical thing. It's a projection of light and dark. So therefore it has no physical matter in the real world. 
So Nara clan members, when they use their spiritual energy, can give form to this nothingness in the form of either a tail that follows people, a huge circle in Chikadai's example, many different shapes. They simply have to use their imagination in conjunction with this formless nothingness in order to stitch shadows in whatever direction they want. Because when you think about it, a Nara shadow is just a projection of their chakra. And while it may seem physical to us because we can see it unlike your average chakra, it's not. It is simply a projection of their imagination. But Nick, people's shadows can pick up things. Okay, I didn't write this. I'm just explaining it. Yes, when a shadow picks something up, does it technically break the rules of yin release? Absolutely. At that point, it would actually technically become a yin yang release, but we'll get to that in a second. Just a little caveat here, since we're talking about exceptions to the rule, not all Genjutsu is yin release. Genjutsu that requires a physical object like smoke or something to activate, and Genjutsu that can create a dimension where it'll actually harm you or create something real into the real world are also not yin release. Fortunately for both of us, yin release is easily the least explored and least explained thing in all of Naruto, so it's only going to get easier from here. So with no further ado, I bring to you yang release. Yang release, like I said earlier, uses physical energy, and it's focused on giving form to things that previously had none. So remember that thing I said earlier about giving a shadow a physical, tangible ability to hold something? That's why it would become a yin yang release because it's a yin release, but then it gets yang release like abilities. And you're not gonna believe who is said to be the largest users of yang release out there. Can you guess? Can you guess? It's the senju. You get it? The Uchiha's are the yin and the senju are the yang kind of you get it. But here's the thing, unlike the Uchiha's, we really don't see the Senjus use Yang release all that much. I'd like to say what I'm about to say here is personal headcanon, it's not fact. But the only time we ever see the Senju use Yang release is Toby Rama. Toby Rama is known for creating three separate jutsus in his lifetime. The Shadow Clone, Edo Tensai, and Flying Thunder God. None of these three techniques technically have any nature release. Seems a bit weird, right? Almost like they're yang releases and it actually makes sense if you think about it let me break it down for you think about a shadow clone there's nothing there until you weave the hand sign but once you mold the chakra and weave the hand sign for a shadow clone you create a form out of nothingness in the form of a shadow clone and i know what you're saying nick wouldn't that be yin yang release because you're projecting your imagination and then giving it form the thing is though it's not imagination you are simply recreating yourself in the form of physical chakra, thus giving shape to something that was once nothingness. Think about Edo Tensai. You take a dead body and once you mold the spiritual chakra and do the hand signs, you are able to give form to that dead body in the form of an inhabitant other soul. By giving form to a dead body, by making it somebody else's body, you are performing Yang release. And lastly, think of Flying Raijin. Flying Raijin is essentially a summoning contract with yourself. By leaving markings around, you set places that you can enter out at any given moment. But the reason that Flying Raijin is limitlessly fast is because you enter a dimensional void between our world and another one and travel to that spot instantaneously. Think of it like the nether where every one block is seven in the overworld. But how do you get into the dimensional void? How do you get out of the dimensional void? And if you're traveling above light speed, how is your body making that trip? The thing is, it's not. Using Yang release, you can break your body molecularly down and travel in this dimensional void. And then at different markings you place, you can then reuse Yang release to recreate your form at that marking. Listen, this is the only explanation I have for these three jutsus because they're all so far out there comparatively to a lot of the other things we see in the show. And Toby Rama was a Senju and the Senjus were said to be able to be good at Yang release. It was supposed to be Ashura and Indra's offspring got Yin and Yang respectively. There is one other circumstance of actual well-known Yang release and that would be the Akamichis. They don't require any fanon whatsoever. This is actual just fact. The Akamichis using their partial expansion jutsu or full body expansion jutsu can create form that wasn't previously there. Choji's hand is this big until he exerts physical energy onto it to make it significantly larger. That one is way easier to explain. Okay, so we've explained yin release and we've explained yang release. What happens if you combine them both? We've touched on it briefly already, but let's really dive in. Yin yang release, for lack of a better word, literally makes you God, essentially. 
you can imagine something and then give it actual form. The best and most well-known example of this is when Hagoromo, using his yin-yang release, creation of all things jutsu, super aptly named, took the ten tails chakra that was inside of him and created the nine-tailed beasts. By doing this, he took chakra and he imagined a physical form for it using yin release and then using yang release created that actual physical form and then boom there's nine walking natural disasters running around shouldn't keep an eye on those or anything a lesser known example of this however is when hagoromo meets with naruto and sasuke and shares some of his power with them yes you could say sasuke got the better end of the deal getting a ringing on and naruto only gets a little bit of six pass chakra mode but what hagoromo also did was allow naruto to use yin yang release naruto hypothetically can use creation of all things jutsu it's actually a good idea for a video one day so what does naruto do with this yin yang release well he fixes kakashi's eye by projecting the idea of an eye and then giving it physical form with yang release he saves mike guy's life after he opens the eighth gate and he resuscitates obito after the ten tails has been pulled out of him and i know these all might seem like massive ass pulls right but here's the thing naruto is not even the first person to use yin yang release to heal people go ahead and guess who the first person to do that was i'll i'll wait because you won't get it right shizune yeah you know tsunade's assistant that has to carry tauntaun around with her everywhere did you know she's one of the most talented chakra users in the history of naruto probably not because they really don't flesh it out while shizune's yin yang release is not anywhere near hagoromo or naruto's level it's still yin yang release she can create the idea of a cell inside of her head and then use yang release in order to give that actual form let's say you lose an ear right shizune can create the spiritual image of an ear using yin release and then using yang release create the cells that would create an ear this is actually how naruto's hashirama cell arm was created and we just and we just never talk about the fact that she could she can just make full-on limbs ever nope she's too busy chasing around tsunade trying to avoid gambling debt sharks but this isn't all that yin yang release can do no yin yang release can actually nullify all forms of chakra which makes perfect sense when you think about the fact that yin and yang releases when put together are literally just the purest form of chakra in fact this is how truth seeker orbs work the user of truth seeker orbs covers their truth seeker orbs in yin yang release chakra and therefore when it hits any ninjutsu it instantly nullifies it but yin yang release can only do so much even in the hands of naruto or hagoromo it can't nullify the effects of kaguya's kekemora ash all killing bone this is because the kekemora is the combination of all five basic chakra natures and yin and yang and that's that's why obito is now dust in the wind and that's it that's yin yang and yin yang release explained it wasn't that scary right i don't know i have been researching for like two hours who cares but if this video saved you two hours of research and you learned something that maybe you didn't know prior well then please for me drop a like drop a subscribe or even drop a noti bell because listen i will save you all the time in the world on research as long as it's research about anime i'm not saying that naruto could hypothetically take a large mass of chakra and then using yin yang release hypothetically build that into i don't know another karama but i'm not saying he couldn't do that either